Media, in its primary definition, is a communication outlet or tool used to store or deliver information or data. However, considering its development in today's world, I would define it in another way. Media is a system that provides freedom of expression but takes away the freedom of thinking. Hello everybody, this is Shahid Sharifi, a media and journalism researcher from Afghanistan. In this short time, I would like to talk about how does media manipulate minds? Before answering this how, this question, first remove how and let's answer this question. Though the answer is obvious, but I'm willing to provide some more specific examples from different aspects of life to dig deeper into the topic and show the prominence of the media power. Um, for the beginning, um, as our topic is all about manipulating minds, uh, let's define the mind. What is mind? Mind is a set of information or understandings about something which we receive through our sighting by eyes, hearing by ears, smelling by nose, tasting by tongue, touching by skin, and mainly hands, and all other analysis that our wisdom machine is doing. They all are being saved in our brain and shape our mind, view, outlook, belief, thought, or any other name you may call it. This is undoubtedly the fact that this is human's nature from the day we born until the end. We are continually receiving understandings through various channels, which causes us uh, to have views about things around us, from a little child to old, from riches to poor people, from Asians to Europeans, and every one of us has something in our mind. Or in other words, we all have an image of things, people, places, and any other cases around us. These images shape our outlook regarding the world uh, outside. At the same time, these images lead our actions, behavior, and even our interests. We witness that uh, the companies printing out bundles of advertisement brochures and distribute among the people. In the contrast, the people are just taking a site and would throw it on the garbage. The brochures are designed fantastic and with a, a good quality and it costs money. Why would those companies doing that? Well, yes, definitely, because brochures help capture the attention of potential customers and it increases the selling rate and helps the popularity of the product or company. So, how does it work? Let's make a structure for this theory. Uh, take this triangle as an example. The base of this triangle is uh, understanding, means all the information we gained through our senses, mainly through eyes and ears. This understanding shapes our outlook, and this outlook is leading our behavior. Here needs to add that uh, process of exporting the understandings to outlook is gradual. We receive the same information uh, repeatedly. This information and understanding will gradually change to our outlook which will then um, get us to hold kind of behavior. Let's take gym as an example. Uh, there's a gym nearby and whenever I'm crossing by, they give me a brochure of the gym. It is proved that distributing brochure has increased their customer number, so that's why they are doing that. Uh, so distributing a brochure does matter, while we only take a look and just throw it on the garbage, but it matters. Why? Because once we take even one site, its picture will be, will be shaped in our mind. But one picture doesn't um, affect us a lot, or let's say it doesn't have enough power to shape our outlook. But uh, when we are facing the same um, information about the company, so um, from different channels over and over again, like someone such as uh, a salesperson whom you receive the brochure from, um, they will just invite you and uh, ask you, say that, uh, do you have time to visit our gym and feel the practicing of the environment? And once we go there, they will start to use different ways to convince us that this is the best, this is the unique. It will be a loss if you just don't 
take enrollment there. It will be a loss. So, by the way, I'm, I'm not saying it's illegal, but um, because it's like a um, marketing strategy. But with this a bit of examples um, and background, I wanted to build a base for my speech and draw the theory that uh, I intended to discuss. This clear and short diagram shows the direct relationship of understanding, outlook, and action. As long as understanding is a critical factor for our actions, uh, the channel we are getting these understandings also play a vital role. Media is the most extensive channel providing worldwide information and understanding in today's world. Nowadays, about 4.66 billion people are active internet users worldwide, which is 59.9% of the global population. Media has the coverage everywhere. It comes in the forms of TV, radio, printed media, and especially social media, which has gathered people from almost all stages, interests, races, languages, and other attributes in our virtual world. Media has a direct influence on our daily decisions. Suppose someone in Afghanistan is going to the supermarket to buy tomato sauce. What brand he prefers to buy the most? Definitely the one he is the most familiar with. Uh, it directly depends on how high Afghanistan media advertises that brand. Advertisements are a critical part of the marketing strategy, especially in business to consumers context. Marketers use this uh, different media vehicle to send across an engaging message to the targeted audience. In a research, um, Singh found that advertising out of the total cost of the product, 34% is attributed to the advertising expenses. This is important because through advertisement, um, marketers aim to achieve high top of the uh, mind recall. Amazon likely doesn't need to spend money on advertising their website, though they still do. In 2020, the total marketing costs of Amazon amounted to roughly $22 billion, and only advertising expenses costed more than $10 billion. So it means that the advertisement matters for Amazon. Apple spent $64.8 million on paid search ads in 2020. So, what are they for? And why are the companies spending that amount of money? The answer just goes back to the formula we just said. They are working on people's minds to maximize their image and get people's attention. And with this, the people's actions start being towards them and their sale rate increases. Not only the economic aspects, but media has also manipulated minds in terms of interests. What do you like? What types of clothes do you like the most? How does fashion change day by day? How does it rapidly cover the whole area? Nowadays, media with a strong hand everywhere can control people's daily lifestyle. A company produces a cloth. With its significant economic power, spreads it everywhere, runs plenty of commercial advertisements, uses the the, the famous people's star power and influence to boost their product and service. Why? Because they can add creditability and glamour to the brand. This process happens on a large scale and wide range that controls people and controls society. If we ask people, well, what you like, is it your own choice or some factors somehow leads you to like something? Everyone definitely will not accept force in, in terms of the, uh, their likings. So, but, 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 but in fact, people are leading towards liking something or hating something. This is why once fashion changes in the society, most of the residents will be influenced by. At the same time, we can apply this theory in more extensive cases like politics and social cases. A microscopic investigation can show us that uh, how many people have an image once they hear 9-11? Well, maybe most people remind the terroristic planes crashed to the World Trade Center Twin Towers and took 3,000 casualties. However, let's ask how many people 
have an image once they here, 6th and 9th of August. We be known with this little title. August 6th and 9th, the year 1945, refers to atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Why do the people have less idea about this big historical point? While more than 200,000 people lost their lives and hundreds of thousands people injured. The answer for that, why, is the fewer media broadcasting globally. In China, each Chinese people feel hard touched when they hear the name of Japan. That name reminds them of the Sino-Japanese war and the pains that they suffered from. But I doubt if Japanese people have the same feelings from Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This is directly related to the range of media attention and how the media reflects the events. Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iran. They are neighboring countries with similarities in language, culture, race, and religion. And also, during wars, millions of Afghan people have immigrated to these countries to live and work. But because of media influence and propaganda, many Afghan people have been influenced by media and started to hating like neighboring nations. On the other hand, Pakistanis and Iranians feel the same way. Though we don't talk about the political problems, but countries' policy is related to the governments, not nations. However, unfortunately, they bring the government issues down to the nations because of media influence. The same problem exists among the people of India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. They're likely not to like each other and sometimes hate each other. Why? Because most of these topics are raised directly or indirectly uh, by the media of those countries. While they all are bordered countries and have lived together for centuries. BBC has a channel in 40 languages of the world and has a 24 hours global broadcast. Persian, Farsi and Dari are the same languages only with a difference in name and slight difference in accent and it's the official language of Iran and Afghanistan. BBC has two different channels for both of them named Persian BBC and Dari BBC. Why? Because BBC intends to have broader coverage. Movies and TV series are another way of injecting the understandings. They can inject kind of views through the syringes of Romance, entertainment, comedy, adventure, and so on. In Afghanistan, a kid has lost his life as he was influenced by a Turkish TV series. Valley of Wolves was a TV series that had a lot of uh, fans in Afghanistan. Polat Alimdar was the hero and Eskander was the enemy. So, a couple of Afghani, Afghan kids in Ghazni province of Afghanistan played the role of these actors and playing the one who acted the Pulat Lamdar, he killed the one who with the, with the role of the Iskander. And he said the dialogue of the drama, Pulat kills his enemies and he himself doesn't die. We live in the era of media and movies. Our lives are started to get away of the reality and become dramatic. Movies have now become the standard that we are trying to reach. Poppy love among kids and teenagers has become a severe issue. Unfortunately, the generation that must have their full attention on their studies and improvement and act as the pillars of the future society misled by the movies. The effect of the movies is noticeable between a husband and a wife. Their desires for living become dramatic. They want something that they have watched it in the movies. Though they almost like forget that's just a movie and it's not comparable with our real life. This caused a significant increase in the divorce rate in today's world. On the other hand, media can either play a very positive role. During COVID-19, the information regarding preventive measures has timely reached everywhere which was the, the unique rule of the, the media. It shows that media has two sides. Whether they, they broadcast, it has two sides of positive and negative. So we should control the positive and 
gets away the, of the negative one. These were some examples that I have analyzed through the perspective of media and journalism. In all, now we can answer on how media manipulate minds. If we sum up and conclude that by its enormous power, media can continually spread information that builds our understanding. We watch it by our eyes, we hear it by our ears, read it by our mouth. Repeating this process shapes our outlook and view. As we are doomed to our views and beliefs, our actions and behaviors are definitely according to our views. So a man with a good and correct understanding will have an excellent and accurate views and belief. And his action and behavior will be correct and positive. But, on the contrary, a wrong and incorrect understanding shapes a worse and more inaccurate outlook. And the actions that comes as a result will surely be incorrect and damaging. So, at last, my dear friends, I want to declare that we unintentionally are the media students. The media is manipulating our minds, so we should be very cautious about what media we gave our eyes, ears, minds, and hearts to. All the best. Peace.